This program is brought to you by the Deeper Life Bible Church, located at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11. Coming up on today's broadcast. Think of the shoes you throw away, the clothes you throw away, the food you throw away. And yet somebody is in need of it in the hospital. So when people say they are speaking in tongues, it is just one thing they are repeating. Just one syllable word and they say they are speaking in tongues. No man. The credentials of those who went out on evangelism notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven so you can now understand blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven my friend, I'm sure you have understood now how Satan came to be. You now understand how the devil came to be. How the old serpent that deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, how it came to be. You now understand how the great dragon described came to be because whenever you go to revelation it is just one person one falling great angel that is given that same name look at it in revelation chapter 12 is very clear he says in verse 9 of revelation he said and the great dragon was cast out hallelujah from heaven that old serpent was cast out called the devil and also called satan who deceived the whole world and is still deceiving the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels that he deceived by lying he was also cast out with him hallelujah oh lord I feel deeply in my soul that a lot of people are being delivered this afternoon because they have discovered that the devil is a liar. They have discovered the limitations of the great dragon. They have discovered that the old serpent is a liar. And you don't have to fear the devil as long as you don't keep pride in your life. Blessed are the poor in spirit and corsets are the proud in spirit. The devil came to be because of pride in his heart. And I say that again. If you allow pride to come into your life, you mash up your life. Believe you me. If you allow pride to come into your marriage, you mash up that marriage. If you allow pride to come to you because of your academic success, material possession, public popularity, or because of who you feel you are. Maybe you are a lady, so beautiful, no wonder nobody wants to marry you. Pride. Maybe you are a man, you are too conscious of your handsomeness, of your car, of your prestige in academic pursuit or attainment. No wonder no lady wants to marry you. Pride goeth before destruction. I'm sure many of you who are interested in true theolo theological study, you, you know, listen, we are not dealing with philosophy, no. We are not dealing with philosophy. We are dealing with the word of God. We are dealing with the truth. Let me quickly show you. That's why I believe the Lord asked me to come back with this message to really re-examine again. Blessed! 
are the poor in spirits. They shall be beautified with good attitude. You want to be beautified in your attitude? Then have that contrite and broken heart. You do what the Bible says. Because, listen to me. It is good you know the danger of pride. The destructions of pride. In fact, there are demons of pride. Today, a lot of persons are being deceived in different ways because they've allowed pride to come into their life. Let me just quickly show you some few things you need to know. In Proverbs chapter 29, Proverbs 29 verse 23, what did he say? Interesting. Proverbs 29 verse 23 says, A man's pride shall bring him low. When you are proud, you will come low. Believe you me. Proud of your money. Proud of your material possession. Proud of your houses and your car. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirits. You know, there are some persons, they will even be saying, I am very humble, but they are lying. There's pride in their life. You don't tell anybody that you are humble. Let the people around you watch your behavior. Don't tell anybody that you are humble. It is the people who are watching you. People see how you behave yourself. Don't parade yourself. I'm very humble. Uh -uh. Don't even talk about it. Because there's pride in their hearts. In fact, the Bible speaks of those, not only that they are proud in their hearts, they are even proud on their face. Look at it now. Huh? In Proverbs chapter 16, in verse, Proverbs chapter 16, also tells us that there are persons not only that they are proud in heart, they are also proud by their look. You know, some people you don't like, okay, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, okay? Proverbs 6, verse 16, it says, These six things does the Lord hate. Any of them you are doing, it identifies you with the devil. Verse 16. These 16 that the Lord hates. One. The seventh one is abomination unto God. The first one is a proud look. Mm -hmm. A lying tongue. A hand that shed innocent blood abortion. And a heart that devised wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to run to mischief, tell bearers. And a false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sweat discord among brethren. Of these seven abominable evils, the number one is pride. Pride. And so, my friend, examine yourself. Even those of us that say we are Christian, you feel you are better than other people in the church because you speak in tongue. And that tongue you are speaking is a parrot tongue. Something you copy from somebody. It's not given to you by the Holy Spirit. You know, when people say they are speaking in tongues, it is just one thing they are repeating. Just one syllable word. And they say they are speaking in tongues. No, man. When the Holy Spirit, you are truly baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, it rolls out as if you are speaking a language that you don't know. So if you, if it's just one syllable word, and that is what you repeat every time to yourself, says you are speaking in tongues, stop it, man. Go to the altar and get the real thing. There are some person, because they pray for somebody and the person get healed, they, they look more superior in the church. Huh? How many pastors, so-called evangelists, how many apostles have told lies 
about the gift that they think they have. How many of them have spoken by suspicion and speculation under the guise that they have the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom? Even when God has not spoken to them. And if you find time, read Je Jeremiah chapter 23. God said, I'm against them. I've not spoken through them. And they say, thus says the Lord. God said, I don't speak to them because they are liars. They are not saying what God has told them. It's just pride. You go to some churches. There are even some of us ministers, the way we dress. Pastor's wife, evangelist wife, the missionary. The way we dress even make the poor in the church to feel ignored by God. People are miserable. The shoe you wear, the clothes you wear, and somebody is in the church cannot even get breakfast. How much do you buy that shoe? Even the wig you put on your head as a woman. The jacket you wear as a man. How many thousands is it? And there are some people in the church, they are jobless. Some people in the church can't send their children back to school or get them lunch. Brethren, there's need to repent and get back to God and realize that we have to share our prosperity. God told Nebuchadnezzar when Nebuchadnezzar was so warned by Daniel, and Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, Break up thy sin and be kind to the poor and do good to the people of God. But Nebuchadnezzar will not listen. But we are told that eventually the prophecy and the pronouncement of Daniel catch up with him he told him cut away from your sinful practice of pride humble yourself before God my friend as I bring this teaching to a close let me just quickly show you how you can become rich before God I don't just want to go back to some of the things I said last week or week before. You remember the man who was in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. He has so much goods and food and wealth. He pull it down and build another one and say, my soul, enjoy yourself. And God said, this night, I am going to ask you to come home. You need to tell me. Who will take over all those things you have accumulated at the expense of your soul? Hmm? Who will you give all those things you have accumulated and you never shared with the poor? My friend, what God has given you, how much of it does the poor around you experience how much or how many people around you do you use your wealth to help think of the shoes you throw away the clothes you throw away the food you throw away and yet somebody is in need of it in the hospital somebody is in need of help around you in your church in your community. Remember, I, as I said, I don't want to go back to the many of the things about Lazarus and the rich man, Diabetes. Lazarus did not go to heaven because he was poor, but because he had passion towards God. Neither did the rich man go to hell where he was born in. Huh? But because he had so much, 
but did not consider that God gave him what he had and did not help the poor. It was the dogs licking the saw of Lazarus. And yet this man, this rich man, could have bought some penicillin, bandage, and take care of the man. I'm sure God is speaking to somebody this afternoon. Remember, God did not create the devil. God did not create, listen to me, Satan. God did not create the great dragon. God did not create uh, the old serpent. But pride created the devil. His name was Lucifer, the beautiful one. Yes? Filled with wisdom. He was perfect at creation. Just as God created us. It was because he had fallen from heaven. He came to the earth to corrupt man that was made from the dust. Because he was jealous. He was jealous. Let me quickly tell you. There are three major things that the devil, the old serpent, the great dragon, and Satan uses to destroy the world, to destroy believers, to destroy sinners. Let me use that reference as my last reference possibly. In 1 John, the first epistle of John, I am reading from verse 15. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, any woman, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Watch it. For all that is in the world, one, the lust of the flesh, Two, and the lust of the eyes. Three, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. My friend, as I bring this program to near close. Take heed on this word to beautify your life. Jesus has given us the prescription to beautify our attitude so that we can advance in altitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, are the humble in spirit, the contrite in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven what are the benefits or the blessings because when they say blessed are the poor in spirit now that word blessed will also mean prosperous protected uh, honored are those who are poor in spirit. When somebody is poor in spirit, is one that gets to say, I need God in my life. I am not what I ought to be. I need God in my life. There's just one way I can picture that for you. Look at the book of Psalm. In Psalm 40, and you will see this is what actually would have happened to Zacchaeus. In Psalm 40, even though Zacchaeus was a sinner, let me begin with Psalm 51. Zacchaeus realized that his money couldn't save him. Because he had enough money. 
he told Jesus, if I have taken anybody's property, if I have taken anybody's money, I'm going to give it back to them four times. That should he had money. He set a big table for the Lord Jesus. And so he hosted Jesus with his disciples. He had money. He was a chief tax collector. But he came to Jesus when Jesus saw him. Hallelujah. I believe there are some persons this afternoon that you are like Zacchaeus. And you are saying, God, though I have material things, I am not satisfied with my life. Yes. Though I am well educated academically, I am not satisfied with my life. I just want more of God. Even as you are listening to me now, you are a sinner and you are saying, Lord, I need something more in my life. David said, this is the language of a man with a contrite heart. A man with a poor spirit. In Psalm, 1, Psalm 51, listen to what he says. It is possible you are in this same position and you are saying, Lord, I want something more than gold and silver. I want something more than dollar and cents. I want something more than academic certificates. Listen to the prayer of the man that is poor in spirits. He said, have mercy upon me. Psalm 51 verse 1. O God. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. That is the language of a man. A woman that is poor in spirit. He said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before thee and before me. Against thee, God, thee only, have I sinned and have done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapened in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in my inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me! Hallelujah! That is the language of the man, the woman, that recognizes his poverty in spirits. He said, purge me with his soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me, hallelujah, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, O God. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirits. And then, and then I will teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Hallelujah. My friend, that is the language of the persons who are poor in spirit. Not proud in spirit. Those who are proud in spirit, they justify their evil. Yeah, man. Those who are proud in spirit, eh, they justify their evil. They say, I'm not the only one doing it. You know how, what is the language of those who are proud in their spirits? And I pray if that is the way you've been living your life, you can turn around today. Look at what the Bible says in that same Psalm 73, 
the language of the proud in spirits. Come on, don't choose that way. In Psalm 73, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as have a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well near slipped. Watch it. Listen to it. For I was envious at the prosperity of fools. I was envious at the fool when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Verse 4. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. The wicked, they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride, pride compasses them about as a chain. Did you hear that? I have shown you from Psalm 51, the spiritual condition of the poor in spirit, of the humble in spirit, of the contrite in spirit, of the broken in spirit, in that Psalm 51. But when you come to Psalm 73, you see the condition of the proud in spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why David said, in verse 3, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Eh? The wicked, in verse 5, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Because of that, verse 6, therefore pride compassed them about as a chain Violence cover them as a garment. Verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Verse 8. They are corrupt and they speak wickedly. Concerning oppression, they speak loftily. Verse 9. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and water of a full cup are wrung out of them. Listen to what the wicked says. Listen to what the proud says. Uh, in verse 11, and they say, this is what the proud people say. Not the poor in heart, but the pride in heart. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We hope this program was a blessing to you. Feel free to call us for prayer and counseling at 876-923-1040 or 876-631-7108 or you can WhatsApp us at 876-451-8509. You can also visit our church location at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11 on Sundays at 9 a.m. You can follow us on our social media platforms for more updates and sermons at Facebook, Deeper Life Bible Church Jamaica, Instagram, Deeper Life Jamaica, and YouTube at Kingdom Life is Deeper Life. Join us next time for the Revival of Truth broadcast. Forever.